What's going on all my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. We are here to help you pass your NCLEX and nursing school exams like a boss. And today we're gonna to be discussing coagulation lab results. Let's get our nurse on. So when we're looking at coagulation studies, we're looking at one of three things, either our PT, our INR, or our APTT. So let's look at each what each one of those are. So to start with our PT, that's also known as prothrombin time. It's a vitamin K dependent glycoprotein produced by the liver that is necessary for fibrin clot formation. It measures the amount of time it takes in seconds for clot formation and is used to monitor response to warfarin sodium therapy or to screen for dysfunction of the extrinsic clotting system resulting from liver disease, vitamin K deficiency, or DIC, also known as disseminated intravascular coagulation. A normal value for your PT would be between 11 to 12.5 seconds. Moving on to our international normalized ratio, which is our INR, it's frequently used to test to measure the effects of some anticoagulants. So it standardizes that PT ratio and is calculated in the laboratory setting. So when you're looking at this lab, you want that normal value to be between 0.8 to 1.2. Lastly, we're gonna look at our APTT. So our APTT is activated partial thromboplastin time, and it evaluates how well the coagulation sequence, that's our intrinsic clotting system, is functioning by measuring the amount of time it takes in seconds for recalcified citrated plasma to clot after partial thromboplastin is added to it. So it screens for deficiencies and inhibitors of all factors except for seven and 12. And a normal value that we wanna see with this is 30 to 40 seconds. So to further our understanding of coagulation, we have to understand the pathophysiology pathways we're gonna begin by looking at the intrinsic pathway. So this occurs inside the cell due to injury. And the clotting factors that it evaluates is 12, 11, 9, 8, 10, 5, and 2 when it comes to your prothrombin and 1 when it comes to your fibrinogen. Activated partial thromboplastin time is commonly tested when it comes to the intrinsic pathway and is usually most commonly tested because of heparin infusion therapies. When it comes to your extrinsic pathway, it occurs outside the cell due to injury such as trauma. So here you're gonna be looking at your prothrombin time as well as your INR, and that's most commonly used when we're evaluating efficiency of our warfarin therapies. So when we're obtaining coagulation studies, this can truly be a bear. So to begin, the specific specimen collection tube that we're gonna use is the blue top tube because it has citrate in it and citrate is infused with blood to help prevent clotting. Well, something important that you didn't know when we are doing this lab specimen technique is you always have to fill the line to the top of the tube. If you send a tube that's say halfway full, the lab is not going to accept it. It has to be all the way to the top of that blue top tube. Um, unfortunately, the citrate may alter the test if it's not full, so that's the reason that they can't accept it. A lot of times with these coagulation tests is they can also be timed studies. So collections must be pulled at certain times in therapy adjustments or to see if therapy efficiency is occurring. So a lot of times you'll see like with your heparin protocols, you'll have to pull it every six hours for so many until you're therapeutic and then it changes to a different time period. That's what I mean when I talk about timed studies. And you don't want to draw a specimen from an arm which is already receiving some kind of medication, such as like heparin. So if you pull it from the same, say, IV or the same arm, then you're going to get skewed studies. So a lot of times you could pull it from that arm, you're going to get a study back, and it's going to be um, extremely high. It's going to be extremely elevated. And that might be because of the where you pulled it. If you were to recollect that specimen from another arm and sent it again and got a better result, it's most likely secondary to that medication administration is what caused that elevation in the first place. So let's talk about increased PT and INR. When we talk about increased, we're talking about that prolongation 
um, in your coagulation study. So with our PT, it's gonna be greater than 12.5 seconds, and with our, our INR, it's gonna be greater than 1.2. So when we're looking at these, we're thinking about deficiencies of one or more of the following. So it could be factor one, which is our fibrinogen, factor two, which is our prothrombin, um, factor five, our labile factor, factor seven, our stable factor, or factor 10, which is our stuart prower factor some kind of deficiency in one of those factors. We could also have vitamin K deficiency occurring, liver disease, that DIC that we talked about before that disseminated intravascular coagulation. It could be an issue with the clotting cascade with factor five, eight, and our fibrinogen um, have all been consumed, and that's the reason we're seeing these prolonged numbers. Um, blood transfusions kind of help reset that cascade. That's a treatment in case that is the particular reason um, for these prolonged numbers. And lastly, it could be warfarin therapy. Um, it will be slightly elevated while the patient is taking warfarin. We don't want it to be too high because that's actually bad for the patient. They're gonna need some kind of adjustment because if it's too high, they're not gonna be clotting appropriately and they're gonna have that increased risk of bleeding, which could be detrimental, especially for our elderly patients who are more at risk for falls. And lastly, looking at that intrinsic pathway lab value, that increased activated partial prothrombin plastin times. Again, it's gonna be prolonged. We're looking at greater than 40 seconds. What are some causes for this, right? So again, deficiency of one or more of the following. So factor one, our fibrinogen, Factor two, our prothrombin. Factor five, that labile factor. Factor eight, we could have an anti-hemophiliac factor. Um, factor nine, our plasma thromboplastin components. Our factor 10, which is that Stuart Prower factor. Our factor 11, which could be that plasma thromboplastin antecedent. Our factor 12 um, could also be a cause of these prolonged times. We could also have excessive heparin therapy. So if we've given too much therapy, that can cause an increase in our um, APTT times, as well as if we get it from the arm, like we talked about before. If you get it from the same arm receiving heparin, you could have a false result. Um, vitamin K deficiency, liver disease, that DIC that we talked about before, and of course, von Willebrand disease can also increase that APTT. I hope that this video was helpful in helping pass your arterial blood gas, nursing school exams, as well as your NCLEX like a boss. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe here to my YouTube and hit that notification bell so that way you're informed every time I post a new video. You can also follow me on my social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram and make sure that you check out my website at www.nursechung.com. There I'm going to have NCLEX style questions, resources, handouts, everything you need to pass those exams like a boss. But until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.